Every once in a while, you'll discover a tidbit of information that you wish you've known for years, and it will change your YouTube channel for the better forever. This is one of those videos. Whether you're using Final Cut, Adobe Premiere, or DaVinci Resolve, these codec and encoding settings will work to help you render high quality YouTube videos that'll compensate for the compression that Google applies to your videos. More importantly than that, if you have some high speed action, for example, some gameplay footage, you won't see dips in resolution or fluctuations in the consistency of your video due to bitrate. The information in this video is a collection of four years of experience from using DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Premiere, as well as a little bit of Final Cut Pro, as well as dozens of support forums and YouTube tutorials that I've all kind of gathered into this video. So this is Slobs or Streamlabs OBS. This is my broadcasting uh, software that I use for screen recording as well as live streaming. If you come down here to the cog icon in the bottom left, in the general tab, you will see this box automatically record when streaming. I do recommend if you are trying to take some of your live streaming gameplay footage to upload to YouTube that you do have high quality local VOD, i.e. it is recorded directly to your hard drive instead of having to download the VOD off of something like Twitch, Facebook Gaming, or YouTube Live, considering you're gonna be downloading the exact image quality that you got from that live stream, which of course, live streams do not look nearly as good as a encoded and uploaded YouTube video. It's funneled into a single bit rate, uploaded to a server, and then down to the end user, i.e. your viewer. Now there are limitations to this. If you do not have a powerful enough PC, i.e. the CPU and the GPU, this might not be a possibility for you as it does tax your PC. When you are playing a video game, live streaming and screen recording, it's a lot to be done. Now, if you don't wanna record your entire stream, maybe you just wanna record the gameplay or a just chatting section, you can manually come down here and click record even while you are live streaming and then stop the recording and you will still be live until you press go live here as well. In the hotkey tab over here, you can actually set up a hotkey for start and stop recording. Or if you have an Elgato stream deck, like I have an XL down here, you can set up two separate buttons for record and live stream. Also in the output tab, if I come over here to the record section and then come down here to record path, you will see I am using a separate drive, a separate uh, NVMe SSD than where I actually play my games from. Because if you are reading and writing data for a game, plus you're also writing data from the screen recording, it's a lot for that SSD or NVMe or God forbid mechanical hard drive to actually handle at once. So I recommend having a dedicated drive specifically just for your screen recordings, your high quality VOD, if you will. Also for recording format, I do recommend .mov, which is basically a QuickTime file, or .mp4. MP4s are gonna be slightly less quality, but it will be substantially smaller in size. So if you're limited in storage, say for example, you're about to do a three to six hour stream, that is gonna be a huge file if it's a .mov. A lot of people also recommend MKV over here because unlike MP4 and MOV, if your recording was to suddenly stop, for example, your PC crashed or you ran out of storage space on that drive, instead of having that whole file lost forever, basically that MKV file would still have recorded everything up into that point and then you can just convert that to an mp4 file and still have that footage. Now, if you Google search optimal or recommended YouTube upload settings, you're gonna get this YouTube support article directly from Google and it's telling you use mp4, h264, and they're right, this was bomb quality back in 2017. Much like a speed limit sign, these are just a recommendation and we can have a lot more fun if we're to exceed the standard. As you can see from this article, both of these will be cited or sourced down there in the description below. All of these video formats are supported. Now, DNX HR has phenomenal quality. However, it is a massive file size. Not only is that more storage space on your hard drive, also that is a longer render time, longer upload to YouTube and longer processing on their server end. It takes forever to get one of these videos uploaded and live or public on YouTube. Now this dirty birdie down here, the H265, has almost the same quality as DNxHR with almost the same size of H264. As of 2019, it has been the second most widely used video coding format after AVC, and it supports up to 8K resolution. This is what we're gonna be using here today. Now we're inside DaVinci Resolve Studio 17. This is my preferred video editing software. I have been using Adobe Premiere Pro for about two and a half years. And then about six or seven months ago, I made the transition to DaVinci Resolve. Not gonna get into the reasons behind that now. I will be doing a pros and cons video as there is definitely benefits and shortcomings to both platforms. Once you're finished editing your video, you've done the cutting, editing, color grading, any audio work inside of Fairlight. Obviously the last step is gonna be this little rock 
rocket ship over here, which is Deliver. This is when you actually render your video to a usable file that you can upload to a platform like YouTube. So after clicking the magical rocket ship and you see all your export settings over here, you're going to click on this little box on the top left, and that is going to give you all of your video options. You do have separate tabs for audio and file. Do not worry about file because that is literally just these two options up here, which change your destination and the name of the clip that you're exporting. Video is where we are going to spend the majority of our time. So we're going to be upscaling our video footage from 1080p to 4K. If you have 4K, we're not upscaling it to 8K. Granted, YouTube does support 8K. The majority of viewers don't have an 8K TV or display for it to even work. Not to mention, if you are trying to push 8K footage, you're most likely trying to record at a native 8K, not upscale. But Upscaling from 1080p to 4K is a very, very good idea. If you can do it, we're gonna cover the caveats or restrictions here because the most common device for people to watch YouTube videos would be on a cell phone. A lot of users also watch on a 4K TV on either a console or a TV set top box or an Amazon Fire Stick, any device that has the YouTube application. So they're watching you on a 40, 65, 85 inch television screen that is 4K. So when you have a 1080p image, it looks very, very pixelated and very, very blown out. As where if you render it at an upscaled 4K, it is automatically scaling or enhancing the image quality to support larger displays, and it will also look better on small displays like cell phones. Also, if you're uploading very, very fast motion, for example, gameplay footage, it is actually gonna make the game look a lot more crisp and a lot less washed out from bitrate fluctuations. Also, you will have a little 4K emblem or logo next to the video letting people know this is in 4K, and granted 1080p is the standard right now, 4K will kind of make your video stand out a little bit more where people see that little logo out of the corner of their eye and the human brain is a pattern matching machine. So they're like, ooh, that's a 4K video. This guy takes a lot of pride in his content that he's uploading. I'll check it out. Even though the average YouTube viewer isn't gonna know the difference between a native 4K video and a upscaled 1080 to 4K video. Because at the end of the day, it's going to look better on their big display and better on their small display. The only caveat to this where I would say just stick with 1080p, your native base canvas, would be if you are either in a time crunch, you're trying to get some news uploaded to YouTube or something, and it doesn't have any high speed motion. So no gameplay footage, it's just talking head like this, or maybe a screen capture in Windows 10 doing a tutorial or something, maybe a product review. But before we get to this, one thing I do recommend you guys change is up here in file and then go to project settings. Over here in image scaling, as we are going to be scaling, under image scaling, you wanna make sure that right here under mismatch resolution files, as we are going to be upscaling, like I mentioned, you want this to be scale entire image to fit. You also want this box checked for match timeline settings and then mismatch resolution files, scale entire image to fit. Bam. Now under master settings where it says timeline resolution, don't worry about bumping this up. Don't worry about bumping this up to 4K or 3840 by 2160 Ultra HD unless that is actually the native footage that you're uploading. So if you recorded it with a 4K camera, then obviously if it doesn't automatically change this, you want to go into project settings and change this. But since we are using source footage here, gameplay footage and a 1080p webcam, all of this is 1080p 60 on our timeline. We are going to be upscaling it to 4K 60. Yes, I know we're missing some media here. We're actually just doing this for demonstration purposes. I've already uploaded this video. So you've got some presets over here. If you drag this bar around, you'll see you've got Vimeo and Twitter and YouTube. And you might be thinking, oh, cool, it's a YouTube video I'm uploading. And if I click this drop down, it's got 1080p and 4K and 1080 is the bare bones standard for quality nowadays. Don't even mess around with 720p. This is going to be H.264 with the recommended bit rate that's just given to us from DaVinci Resolve. No, sir. We're going to go over here to custom. File name, this is gonna be the title of your video. So when you upload it, this is what's going to pop up in the title box of YouTube. And of course you can change it there if you want. Location, this is where you wanna render it to. I generally render the videos I'm about to upload directly to my desktop for quick finding. Render, single clip. We're gonna start over here in the video tab. Yep, we're trying to export a video. For the longest time, I was using MP4. Why? Because well, according to that article from Google, that's the recommended, that's the recommended video format. No, sir. QuickTimer.mov is actually a higher quality video, and since our videos are going to get compressed so heavily when you upload them to the Google servers to YouTube, we want to absolutely maximize the quality on our end. We are going to go with QuickTime. H.264? Sure, Lee not. We're going to go down here to H.265. It's more handsome, swole brother with better teeth. And notice one thing right off the bat here. When you have H.264, you have the option to use your CPU or your GPU as the render device. When you choose H.265, is your highest quality or highest 
available piece of hardware, which in this case would be my 3080 GPU. You will not have this encoder option unless you have an NVIDIA GPU that has what is called NVENC, which is short for NVIDIA encoder. This is one of the reasons, if not the primary reason, that I always recommend to anyone that wants to do any screen recording for YouTube or live streaming that they get an NVIDIA graphics card over an AMD graphics card is you have an onboard encoder which doesn't take away from the frame rate of your game at all because it's a separate part of the GPU that does your video encoding. It's fantastic. So again, for this block right here, we're doing QuickTime, which is a .mov file, H.265, and we're using our highest quality encoder, which should be NVIDIA. If you do not have a compatible card, then it's just going to say native, and that's totally fine. Granted, your render times might be kind of high. Resolution. 1080p. Yep, that's the native footage that we have here, but we're upscaling. So we're going to go to 3840 by 2160, which is 4K. If you have any doubts about this, like I said, this is based on a ton of research that I've done and also testing myself, uploading the same video in multiple different codecs and encoding settings and watching it, pulling out my telescope, my monocle, if you will, and looking at every pixel, especially with high motion captures such as gameplay. Frame rate, you're gonna select your native frame rate. This was all shot at 60 frames per second, both the gameplay footage and my webcam. And don't worry about if it gets grayed out or blacked out where you can't change it like that. It is going to select whatever the native footage is. Quality over here. A lot of people go over here and select automatic best. We're actually gonna get better results by going to restrict to and typing this in manually. And what you're going to do is double your frame rate. So this is 60 frames per second. We're gonna do 120,000 kilobytes per second. So again, doing the math here, if we were uploading 30 frames per second, this would be 60,000. If you're doing 24 frames per second, this would be 48,000 so on and so forth, but we're gonna do 120,000. Now, virtually the rest of this should be left untouched. Keyframes, automatic, rate control, variable bit rate, high quality, blah, 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 all this. Now over here in the audio tab, if you are on Windows like I am, 192 kilobytes per second is the maximum. If I type in 200 and hit enter, boom, pops me back to 192. If you are on a Mac, an Apple computer, you will be able to bump this up to a higher rate, in which case I do recommend selecting 320. You will get higher quality audio. Is it a game changing amount of quality? No, but it's something. That's what she said. And once you hit add to render queue, you're going to get this warning right here. And it's saying, are you sure? Because this is a 1080p timeline and you're trying to upscale to 4K. Have you lost your marbles? Have you been huffing glue? Uh, we have and we are sure that we want to do this. So we're going to hit add. The only reason I'm getting this pop up is I already had this sitting on my desktop. So we're just going to hit replace. And as you see, while well, my face is hiding it, let's go ahead and hide me. Now it is in the render queue. So when I hit render all, it is going to execute that job and render the video. Depending on your render device, if you're using a powerful CPU or a good GPU or an old dusty computer, maybe you're on a laptop, God forbid, or something, you gotta make do with what you got. Maybe you're on a business trip or something. Your render times might be substantially higher. And if they are, and you are strapped for time, what I recommend you do is using all the settings that we did here, except do not upscale to 4K. Just leave it at 1080p. Now to save time, so you do not need to type in all of these settings each and every time you go to render a video, these three dots up here, you will see save as a new preset. You will be able to save it as a new preset. So now if you come over here, I have one that's titled 1080p upscale to 4K. And every time I click on it, bam, QuickTime H265, 120,000 kilobytes per second, and go. I genuinely hope that this video was beneficial for you. I know it ran rather long. However, this is very useful information that I wish I would have known two and a half years ago when I started getting serious about YouTube. Again, even if you are on Adobe Premiere or Final Cut, yes, the user interface, the menus will look different, but you will have the same settings for format, codec, encoder, the same drop-down boxes, and you will run these exact same settings because we're all uploading to the same final destination, which is YouTube. If you got value from this video and it helped you to get higher quality uploads to YouTube, liking the video will help it to get seen by more people, so this information will reach and assist them as well. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, and I will see you tomorrow because I upload daily. Peace.